In this video, I'm going to show you how to use our Angular Starter Kit to build an application on Form.io. You don't have to use our Starter Kit, as our tools will work with any type of Angular application. But if you're looking for a place to start, this is a pretty good place. To start, we're going to need Git, Node, and NPM installed. So I'm going to verify that those are installed real quick. Looks like I've got all three of those installed, so that's good. Um, if you don't, there's a lot of tutorials online on how to get those installed on your uh, version of operating system. Next, we want to ensure that Bower and Gulp are installed. So I'm going to try. Now, normally you would run this command. I'm going to skip it because I know they're already installed, and I can double check that by doing Gulp version and Bower dash dash version. So now I know that my system is all set up and I have all the tooling in place to do what I need to do. So the next thing we need to do is grab the repository and that's over on GitHub at github.com slash formio slash ng app starter kit. I'm just going to grab the clone URL and if you're using a different tool for Git you can do that as well. I'm going to do git clone ng app starter kit. Now we're going to take a look at how this application is set up. And for that, I'm going to open up this application in WebStorm and take a look at what's inside of here. You'll notice the main files are located within source app. This is where all of the files that build your application are, are located. I'll go into these in more detail in a later video. I'd also like to point out that there's this config.js file. Typically, as we're building applications, we use the config.js file to put in the project-specific settings, such as the project URL, which you can find right here, the API URL, and then we build out the forms and the resources and other types of URLs using these into the config as well. This allows us to refer to them later within the application by the standard config name, and if we had to change them or change the project, it's very easy to do later. This app uses NPM to install dev dependencies. They're located within package.json right here. And it uses Bower to install all the application dependencies and uses Gulp and WireDep to wire everything together and serve the app. You can see all the Bower dependencies right here within Bower.json. You can find the Gulp configuration inside of the gulpfile.js as well as the Gulp directory right here. This contains all the different commands you can run inside of Gulp. So let's install the, the dependencies now. And we can do that simply by running npm install. This will install all the developer dependencies, such as all the Gulp tasks and all the libraries that Gulp uses. I've skipped ahead a bit, as npm install can take a little while. And next up, I'm going to run Bower install. And Bower install is going to install all the application dependencies used in the front end. Whenever we're asked a question for which dependency to use, we typically go with the most recent version. You can pick whichever ones you want. Uh, Bower is a little bit faster to run. Our build process uses Gulp and WireDep to wire everything together. So WireDep is going to read the Bower.json file for any application dependencies, and then we'll compile those into the final uh, build files that are served up to the browser. So if you want to install any additional front-end libraries, you can just do Bower install and then the library name dash dash save, and it will save it to Bower.json, which will automatically include it using WireDep into your application as well. We should have everything properly installed now, so we can fire up the server locally by running gulp serve. And this will actually compile everything together using gulp and WireDep and all of the different ways and things that it does, and then start a browser window with the application being served from it. And in just a second, we should see that open up. There it is. And our application is now being served. Now you'll notice we have an example form and a home page and the header bar up there at the top. So that's just kind of some default stuff that we have inside of this app. In addition, uh, we're using Gulp Watch and Browser Sync to automatically update this application anytime you make a change inside the app. And I'm going to show you one of those, which is we 
we're also using a boot swatch theme here. This is uh, Cerulean, but we can switch this out for any of the other ones. And you can find that inside the index.scss. We're using SAS to compile. So if we open that up, you'll see we're including boot swatch as well as Bower inside of here. So we can switch this over to maybe the, the paper theme from boot swatch. And now when I save this, I don't even have to reload. It's going to reload this page for me using now the paper theme. You can do additional styling work inside of here by setting your variables before the, these commands. You can either set the boot swatch variables to change the way that boot swatch compiles or the bootstrap variables as well. So you can do all the variables on here as well as your own custom SAS and CSS down here to add whatever styles you want inside the application. So this will allow you to either customize boot swatch and bootstrap or write your own CSS as well in any way, shape or form. So we just have some nice functionality there. So finally, what we want to be able to do is now compile this so we can push it up to a server somewhere instead of just running it locally. And we do that with gulp build. And by running gulp build, it will do the same compilation process, only it's going to output the results into the dist folder. I've sped this up again, and the resulting files are all contained within this disk directory. You can actually take this directory and put it on any file server, whether that's S3, GitHub pages, uh, an Nginx or Apache server. It doesn't have any special server requirements. You can just take this directory and serve it from any website, and it will be now your application. So this is how a basic setup for a Form.io application is. Uh, feel free to use our starter kit, or you can build your own process as well. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to add forms and resources inside your application.